Diagnosing possible roof damage using a drone. So it's really cold out here. I'm not gonna spend too much time outside narrating this, but I am going to attempt to take this drone, bring it up over the roof, and see if I can figure out what might have caused the water damage that we found this morning. I'll tell you more about it in the voiceover because I don't want to spend too much time out here. It's about 28 degrees. So I woke up like I do every morning. Coffee first. But then, what's this? There was this weird puddle on the stove. It's a little hard to see in natural light, but if I pull out the color and boost the contrast, you can see the puddle more clearly. There was nowhere it could have come from except from this vent at the top of the stove. This normally exhausts steam and cooking smoke through a vent at the top of the house. We hadn't noticed leaks before even though it rains a lot, but this was the coldest it's been. I thought there might be a leak exacerbated by the cold in one of the roof vents or some kind of problem with the roof flashing. I had no desire to climb up on the roof on such a cold day, so I decided to launch the trusty Mavic Pro and see what I could see. Fortunately, the wind died down because it's not really a good idea to fly a drone in high winds. It's particularly not a great idea if you're doing so mere feet from your roof. A careful nudge of the left thumbstick spun the drone around 180 degrees, so it was facing the house. Because I'm flying this in a residential area, I made sure to point my camera gimbal straight down, so the only filming I would do was of my own roof. I lifted the drone up about 15 feet and then set the device to tripod mode. This has the effect of substantially reducing the speed of the drone for more precise flying. This is the vent I suspected of having a leak. I flew closer to the house, then got on top of the vent to get a closer look. This kind of close flying, especially with 4K video enabled on your drone, will help you do some very detailed inspections. For example, I can see using this technique to inspect gutters or in some place like Florida, inspect the whole roof for damage after high winds or a hurricane. I wanted to look at that vent from multiple angles, so I rotated the drone around to get a clear view. I did notice some rust spots on the vent flashing as well as some possible gaps. Without having to climb up on the roof, I was able to do some investigation before calling in a handyman to do the actual repairs. I was a little nervous as I got to the peak of the roof. It wasn't clear from the small iPhone screen whether I was high enough to pass over it. This is when it's good to have your drone in your direct line of sight. I moved far enough away from the house to see the drone from the ground and then carefully navigated it over the peak of the roof with room to spare. While the Mavic was up on the roof, I decided to take a few minutes to check out the other vents. I didn't see any sign of water damage or anything else that gave me concern. This is a great example of using a drone as a tool rather than simply a camera. I don't have a commercial drone license, but you can see how drones can be particularly helpful in building and property inspection and for checking for damage. I want to end this with a quick shout out of thanks to the folks at Wellbots who provided the Mavic Pro for this series. And while I've got the drone in the air, Let's go up about 375 feet and take a look at the beautiful Willamette Valley here in Oregon.